joining, 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 joining. Here we go. We have so many people jumping in here. It's great to see everybody. Give it a minute. Let everyone jump in. See a lot of familiar faces. There's Eric. Hello, Eric. Jim. Wow, Jim, we don't get to see you very often. Great to see you. <laughs> awesome. I couldn't miss Amy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll give it another minute. We have other people. Hi, Jeremiah. Hi, Carolyn. How are you doing? Awesome. Anybody got a great drone story? Hi, Sharon. Before I blab about my great drone story. All right. I, I flew over Iceland. What? Yeah, you did. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> serious tell us about it yeah but i tell people you know i tell my client i said oh i'm gonna be flying a drone over iceland this week and they're like what so yeah through nature's uh nature eye and nature eye is a company that has about eight areas around the world where they have pilot drone pilots and through technology you're able to remotely fly a drone over some of those beautiful regions oh my gosh that's Awesome. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. That's fun. Don't you love technology, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it works, it's fabulous. Yes. Yes. Yep. Just connecting the whole world. Kind of like going to Ireland, right? <laughs> so I have to do a big shout out to Sharon and Women in Drones. Thank you so much for putting together something like that. It was an amazing experience. It was wonderful to meet up with women from around the globe because we had uh, um, Kim James, Louise, we had other people, uh, Annalisa, just from all over that got to go and do a book signing and do presentations there in Ireland. And it was phenomenal. So thank you, Sharon, for opening doors for so many women in the industry. You're amazing. Yay. Big shout out to Sharon. Sharon's like, okay, come on. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Awesome. Anybody else got a great story to share before I segue over to a couple of announcements that I have? Anybody get out and fly? Jim always gets to get out and fly. Sharon, so go right ahead. Go ahead. Desi, I just want to mention that we also had um, our partners, our strategic partners uh, from Drone Industry Insights from Germany speak, and then also our new strategic partner that we'll be announcing on Friday, more details, Emery Riddle. Uh, they, they sent a speaker from their Germany campus to also speak, and we were responsible for coordinating their engagement. So I just want to shout out those two strategic partners. Awesome. Yes. It was it was an amazing event. There's Sheila doing the dance. Yes. <laughs> oh, can, can I share? Can I share a slow story here, real quick? I had a uh, I had a tortoise and a hair moment at my house. Oh, can you hear me? Barely. It's all kind of uh, wonky there, Johnny. Oh no! Hold on. Sounds like low bandwidth, Johnny. Driving, yeah. Ah, that sounds better. Okay, how about now? Yeah, sounds better. Oh. All right, any better? Yeah, go for it. Hello? Okay, so now we hear you. You apparently don't hear us. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, well, we'll circle back to you, Johnny, right? Okay. I'm going to segue over. Hi, Vic. Saw you just popping on right there. And I am going to segue really quick. I want to do a big shout out and a thank you to our sponsor. And that would be Professor Drones. I'm going to put the link into the website, but they design, develop, audit, and teach. They specialize in UAS projects related to hazmat and pipelines. 
definitely want to check them out and I will get you a link for that. And if you want to be a sponsor for the virtual networking sessions, I will provide a link in there for that as well. You can have your company spotlighted in our sessions. You'll have our logo up on the Women and Drones website and your company will be mentioned on social media. So I will make sure that I put that in there for you. And isn't that a perfect segue? I hear the doorbell going. I think Sheila's going to be able to help out. Um, I want to do a big shout out actually to Sheila, who helped with the Comic Connection last week. Her and Bill uh, did a fantastic job. Thank you, Sheila. Wonderful. Awesome. So I'm going to put this uh, information into our chat and I will segue over to our spotlight speaker. We have Amy with us. I know that's why everybody is here today. And she's going to be sharing with us about marketing. Everyone who is in business has to think about marketing. And so what a fantastic topic. Amy, I'm going to make you spotlight for everyone. Thank you for joining us and sharing with us here on the Coffee Connection. Oh, hey, thank you so much for having me, especially the day after you get back from Ireland. <laughs> Good for you. And thank you, Women in Drones, for continuing to showcase um, what's possible. Um, I know there's a lot of other people on this call that are doing that as well. It's super exciting to see in those social media feeds, which is really where we see each other these days, right? More often than not. And one of the things I introduced myself for those of you who don't know me very well, I've been in the industry since 2013. Um, I started a drone program at the flight school that I ran and ended up working with the state of Virginia um, and their public safety program and building a training program for the state. Um, that turned into something else, to be quite honest with you, in which I ended up uh, working for a drone company who um, is better known now as a drone delivery company. And that was just a really great uh, learning experience for so many reasons. I got to work with a lot of really big names um, in enterprise, uh, as well as some really big time advertising agencies. So I learned a lot and I'm very grateful for that. Currently, I'm actually the head of marketing for a software company called Pointivo. And they um, do um, physical asset inspection for mainly telecom and commercial facilities using drone technology. So this is um, rounding out my career in the drone space with um, the understanding of how engineers think and software developers. And again, very grateful for the opportunity. Now, during COVID and 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 really after the last several years, um, companies have become more open-minded and changed and evolved to be open to those they trust. And I, I really do feel appreciative of the opportunity to start my own business too. So that's what I've done. I've started um, a consulting firm called Earhart Alden and Associates. And why that? Um, I'm a distant cousin of Amelia Earhart. And um, she, like for many other people, has been a source of inspiration. And um, John and Priscilla Alden, um, pilgrims who came over on the Mayflower and settled, who many of us are related to, um, they're my 13th great-grandparents directly. And so over the years, I've taken inspiration from their courage, um, their tenacity, and um, you know the confidence they had to do new things. And so that brings me to, let's try something um, and let me see how I can help people. Um, we're getting ready to talk about, you know, what inspires people to take action, um, your purpose, your mission statement, your whys. And so for me, the why is uh, behind Earhart Alden and Associates is being able to help savvy risk takers um, propel their businesses faster. Um, again, I mentioned I've learned a lot. I've learned what not to do and what to do um, and how to help people do um, the right thing faster or fail fast which is super important. So I'm excited to share that with um, anybody who's wanting to have it shared. Um, and I appreciate the time time here today. One of the things that I think is super important um, to this particular uh, Coffee Connection is interaction. Um, I'd like for this to be an open um, forum in which you, know, you pause me and say, hey, I have a question about what you just said before it gets you know, out of the peripheral. 
Um, we can also do questions at the end, but I only have three slides here. And the reason for that is because I think less is more and because I think conversations are more important than me just, uh, you know, what do they call it? Show up and throw up in sales is what they call it. And so a lot of people ask me, you know, what is GTM? What is go to market? And that's a buzzword. It's a trendy word right now. It's a not even actually my favorite way to talk about this, but it's a real important um, opportunity to talk about how things connect in our business. And if they're not aligned, how we can make missteps. And so go to market um, is more than marketing. It's the revenue generation team. And the revenue generation team consists of the sales team, the marketing team, the product and service teams, and also your customer service, customer success, cust ops teams. Um, I was telling Desi before I got on the call, a lot of people know me from my marketing experience, but my main experience in my life, and I've lived long, as you can see, I'm one of the going gray gals here, guys. Um, I've had 30 years or more of experience um, in sales and marketing, mostly in sales, primarily in operations. So um, bringing that to the table, I, I just want to share with folks that having those four aligned is super important. And how can we make that alignment better, more effective, um, you know, not get um, caught up in silos, which is super important to startups who need to move fast. So forgive me, but I have to start at the beginning. And I'm really passionate about that. Um, you know, even if you've already started your business, you're going to want to um, always reassess, um, evaluate, have feedback loops. A lot of people do surveys, internal conversations, tracking KPIs, tracking what worked, what didn't work. Um, and that all stems from um, your purpose and your mission and why you're doing this. Um, one of the things that they teach us in marketing is um, they teach a lot of us in marketing is, um, you know, really align with your purpose. And again, this will be your mission statement for your business. Many of you probably already have one or they've already been created for you. Um, people buy um, because they're inspired to take an action. Um, and I'm going to give you a few examples of that. Um, People buy because they're inspired to take an action through an emotion or feeling. So marketing, marketing is a lot about psychology. And some of you may be familiar with Simon Sinek's. Some people don't like him, some people do, but he had a really great speech um, that he made about finding your why, finding your purpose in your business, um, because it does inspire action. And he used a lot of examples and, and Apple was one of those examples. Um, you know, Apple sells, they started out by selling computers. Um, they sell a lot of other products now, watches, phones, all kinds of gizmos. Um, but that's not what they sell. I mean, you don't really see Apple saying we sell computers. You know, they they sell like thinking outside the box, thinking differently. Some of you may be familiar with the crazy ones ad or, um, you know, we're not like everyone else. Um, if you go online now, you'll see they, they're selling vision, visionaries. They're selling privacy and security um, and an easier way of living, an easier way to do life. So none of that really has anything to do with computers, but you can see that they're taking that purpose and trying to sell their product by selling the purpose, which is how we all buy and so that's really the, the, the really the first thing, the connection for people. All of us are psychologists, have psychology working in our brains. And there's so many stories about this and so many smarter people who have talked about this than me. But if you take a look at how you buy, you'll probably start seeing patterns of, you know, emotions were involved. And, you know, I have a lot of e engineers tell me, well, that, I'm not gonna buy from an emotion. I said, do you wanna win revenue? Winning is an emotion. Um, having a win is an emotion. Do you want to look good for your boss? That's something that motivates you to ins to take you know an inspired action to buy or to partner or whatever it may be. Coca Cola is another great example. Um, everybody's probably familiar with um, how they promote community. Um, some of us that are older remember 
you know, the song, I'd like to teach the world to sing. That wasn't about drinking a soda or a pop or however you'd like to say. Um, that was uh, definitely about bringing people into their community and their emotion and a feeling. Um, eBay, another great one. They create an opportunity for everyone to have what they want, basically. And that's how they promote it. Um, that's not what eBay does. eBay is a platform. You put your junk on there and somebody else finds it valuable or now they've expanded over the years, right? Um, all state insurance. We help people's dreams come true. I never think of insurance and my dreams coming true, to be honest with you folks, but I tell you what, um, Geico's done a good job. Progressive with flow. We love, we all love flow. There's an emotion there. Um, even myself, I'm still thinking through this as I build this new consulting business is what is my mission? And currently on my website, you'll see that, you know, I want to empower entrepreneurs to succeed faster. Um, and that's super crucial for me. I also want to do it in a way where um, we're not mincing words. We can be real honest and transparent with each other. Trust is super important. So I'm, I'm like mulling over my own mission statement here too um, and my purpose. But really what inspires people to take action is the benefit that they get. Um, all of us want to benefit from something. And if you're working for executives, they definitely do. If you're working for yourself, maybe your spouse says, honey, when's the next paycheck coming in? Or you're even looking at your tax man and saying, I need to make more next year, something like that. We're all aspiring to more, correct? And the, the benefit of inspiring action comes from things like I just mentioned, winning, a lot of us in the drone industry um, use value propositions as they're called, like saving time. This will save you money, it's more cost effective. Um, you know, if you're in workforce development, you're f fostering prosperity. So those are the types of, of benefits that people get. And those benefits are what inspire action. And inspiring action is what gets people to buy. And so I'm going to pause there and say, say, does anybody have any questions about mission statements, purposes, the why? So, uh, feel free to put any comments or questions into the chat. We can open up the mics and have conversation as well. There is some uh, conversation going on into the chat right now about some of you had mentioned the Coca-Cola commercials and such. And so there were some comments about the polar bears singing. Yeah. <clears throat> I posted the one about everybody who wants to be a pepper. You remember that right. one? Oh yeah. And so those kind of things, like you said, inspire the community. And so that leads to that inspiration of, I want that. And that's the direction I want to go. I want to partner with that company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so a lot, a lot of the smaller businesses and a lot of the drone drone um, ops, you guys, you're like, well, how am I different than the next drone guy? I promise you, you're different. I promise you, your purpose is different. Um, even if you're, you know, doing construction monitoring or you know, you're you're doing inspections for telecom or whatever it may be. Um, I promise you, your purpose is different. And when you find that purpose and you can sell to the customer's problem through that purpose, you're going to win faster. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. Jim, he did put a question into our chat. How okay. do you get a company to adopt a mission statement when they have not for a very, they haven't been around for a very long time? building a history, I think is what he's trying to say. No, they've, they, you know, high tech's 50 years old and they don't have mission statements or, mm -hmm. or yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, my career came from a university environment and those are very strong in, mm -hmm. in a university yeah. environment. And right. it, it's like, I've, I've asked, I've mentioned, I've said, Hey, you know, what's, what's the, what's the company's mission statement? What are these divisions, mission statements and, and company promises and goals, right? And right. they just, they just don't buy into it. Right. And, and so okay. So that's the story of my life, like buying into a mission statement. Well, let me ask you this. What's your North star? What does the company want to achieve? And then work back for, 
back from there because every every company wants to achieve. Every company has an, a North Star. So getting to that North Star, how are you going to do that? Why are you doing it? Really, the mission is, is why. It's your purpose for doing business. And so a lot of times, if you don't know your purpose for doing business, you skip other steps, you skip other things, you miss the mark. Um, and again, you know, it is a hard sell. It's, it's like, oh, this is fluffy goop de goo. Well, it's really not. And um, I can tell you um, that I've experienced it in earning a, you know, nine digit um, investment and several seven digit contracts, knowing that other people buy in to your purpose. Um, and, you know, looking at all these other companies, um, like I said, Coke, Allstate, Geico, Apple, all of their people understand that this is super important. And so if you've got all of these big guys who are making millions and billions of dollars and spending millions of dollars in their marketing categories, it'll work for a small business too, just at a different different level. And just for, for everybody's knowledge, um, if you contact me after this, I actually have a whole worksheet on how to how to get to your why, and it might help you, Jim, with selling it to high tech. Um, I have actually three three handouts for the group. I have, um, you know, finding your your purpose, your company's purpose, um, a go to market strategy timeline, which kind of helps you, even if you've already started, even if you've already been in business for a few years or five years, it'll it'll help you kind of look at okay, maybe I need to reassess this because I'm not getting to, to, to Z. I'm not getting to my North Star yet. I want to get to my North Star faster. Um, and then also some tar top marketing strategies too. So feel free. I'll have my um, information at the end of the this presentation and I'll send you those PDFs so you can look at them and, and use them internally as needed. Awesome. Can I put your email into our chat right now just in case someone wants to? Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I saw that Tawny was unmiked. Tawny, did you have a question or you're just unmiked? <laughs> no question. We can't hear you. <laughs> so, okay, if you have a question, uh, you can throw it in our chat. And if not, we'll circle back. I am not connected to audio. Okay. <laughs> But if you uh, if you have a question, feel free to put it into our chat. All right, Tony. <laughs> Break out your sign language skills. You're good to yes. go. <laughs> We're good. There we go. Thumbs up. All right. So it looks like we have uh, pretty much. If anybody else has questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat. And if not, Amy, we'll go ahead and circle back to your PowerPoint. Sounds good. Sounds good. So the so the next thing I wanted to just just showcase is again what is go to market what does that mean? Um, it, it's it's really the plan of your organization to take that revenue generation team, sales, marketing, product, service, and customer success, um, and deliver it to your customer how they need it. Um, some of you are saying, "Well, I'm all those people," <laughs> and I get that. Um, some of you have teams um, and. Uh, you know, it's it's achievable as a one person team. It's achievable as a 500 person team, but it really is about alignment and understanding that North Star, understanding your purpose and, um, you know, obviously doing some research and a lot of people miss this step. Um, you know, it's super hard in a green industry with a niche product or service to know history, right? Um, and history can tell us a lot about where we need to go moving forward. Um, but as much as we can, um, researching who our competition is, is, is crucial. Um, in fact, I've been on sales calls in which I've talked more about the competition than my own product or service and being able to help people understand in a very politically correct way why we're different. And that's really the key, your differentiators. So knowing your competition is crucial. Um, you know, doing research about your prospective customer. Before you get on a call, again, I use that show up and throw up. That's a real tacky way to say, don't get on a call and just present, you know. Um, know, know what they need from you, understand what they need from you and um, do a little research before as much as you can. 
Um, you know, sizing the market's obviously important. Um, segmenting the market, a lot of, of drone service providers, we've got, you know, different industries we can service. All of those industries speak different languages and have different needs. And so really understanding those different segments and how you present to those folks, how you talk to them, um, what their problems are that they need to solve. There's, they're all different. Um, so that's important to understand. And then understanding your organization model, how am I gonna go out to market is super important. Um, a lot of people miss all this, they just start. And if you miss all of this and you start, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just that down the road, you're gonna find some gaps um, or you might not be accelerating as fast as possible. Um, but what's more crucial to understand is that during each step of the process, each step of your, your business growing and learning, you're gonna be doing research. Um, it really should never stop. It's not just the first step, it's the always be a student of your customer and of your own brand. Um, you know. A lot of times people say, well, Amy, you know, you talk a lot about strategy and plans. And yes, we need strategies. We need plans. It helps us align. It helps these teams align. It helps for same um, space conversations and for less mistakes. But we also need to be flexible and we need to be able to pivot and um, be open and transparent about that. Um, you know, one of the greatest examples I can I can tell you about that is is my experience at Drone Up. Um, you know, COVID hit us and we were, we started, our business plan was to help public safety officials um, do what they needed to do. And that's how I got into the business with Drone Up because I was already in the public safety space with drones. Well, COVID came and um, Tom pushed his sleeves up and said, we have to find another, another thing to do. And he did. And the, you know, what, for better or worse, he, he did, he did it. And, um, uh, was able to uh, capture one of the biggest customers, retail customers in the world, which is Walmart. And so that is, uh, let's fail fast, let's pivot, and let's, you know, let's see where we can go with this. Um, and and that's a really great example of um, having to be flexible. Um, and I'm grateful for that um, because of the time, I think a lot of, uh, of us know COVID was a hard year for a lot of people. So Keep that in mind too. You know, we're in an inflation year and the economy's, you know, the political climate's crazy. So your customers are going through all of that too. And that needs to be something that's in your mind um, as you approach um, earning new business and working with your current customers. Um, these steps are, you know, for us to use as a guide, not the Bible, not the, the, the root of all evil here, but it, they really do help. Um, and so once you move from your initial research phase, or maybe you're redoing some research, you want to you want to get into that planning. But again, remember, your product may grow differently. Your product may need to grow differently because the market changed. Your service may not be aligned with the current structure of um, your customer. And so you're listening and maybe you're doing some customization. Um, definitely pay attention to those things as you're planning, but still have a plan a best made, best laid plan. Um, you know, customer channels and targets. How are we on, on time? I don't want, I could get into this. Like guys, I could talk about this all day long and twice on Sunday. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, make sure you're targeting your customer. Um, and when I say that, everybody's like, well, yeah, duh. But no, it's really hard now. It's harder than ever before. I was in sales and marketing in the olden days when there was TV, print, uh, radio and billboards and direct mail. And there were five things and it was a lot easier. It was hard to track, but it was a lot easier to, to think about. Um, you, you did a 1-800 number that had some kind of tracking on it and you knew your ad was working. Now you've got people are bombarded by so much. And one of the best things you can do is really understand who your customer is, what their problem is and how you can solve it. And then work into where are they visiting? What channels are they visiting? Where are they looking? Really laser target on um, finding out where their eyeballs are, because that's going to help you accelerate faster. You're not wasting time just like blasting something out to the world, hoping that your customer sees it. You really have to focus on where your customer is going to see it. So that may mean 
um, going outside your box a little bit. Um, obviously, value propositions are important. This is the benefit to the customer. What is your services or products benefit? Understanding that um, and your purpose and how it meets their problem is the benefit to you and to them. Again, we're constantly always working on organizational framework. And then, you know, you move into bigger objectives and plans as you go down this um, go-to-market methodology program here where you really want to hone in on what your sales objectives are. What revenue kind of generation do you meet? What, what's the model that you're going to use? Are you going to be a subscription-based model? Are you going to have licensing as a part of that? What do your contracts look like? Um, do you need an NDA? All of the, the operational things around that. Marketing is the same way. What does that look like? How much are you going to spend? Are you going to spend anything? If you're not going to spend anything, how are you going to make money? What are you doing there? What's the return on investment for your marketing and sales program? And then obviously customer success. Um, so many of you who are entrepreneurs who are doing all of this by yourself know that you're you're out in the field, you're taking the pictures, then you're coming and you're doing the editing and and you're interfacing with the customer directly. And obviously we're in this for the customer. Customer success, retention, and expansion objectives are huge. So how are you gonna maintain those um, at a scalable level for one person um, or maybe with contractors or in some instances, employees, right? Um, and then operationally in market, you, you wanna launch. That's the next step if we're doing it in order. Um, um, and really then now it's, okay, are we a market fit? Is this working for me? And then why isn't it working or what's working best? Um, feedback loops, customer surveys, talking to customers, being transparent, having conversations versus, you know, just telling them what's happening along the way, super important to moving faster. And there are a lot of common sense things. We forget that the people that we're selling to are just people too, and they want to work with people that they like. Um, and that they trust. So I'll stop there. Go to market mythology. Any questions about this very simple, basic overview? So there is another comment in our chat. Not sure if Tawny has found her audio yet, but uh, once you target your prime client base, what marketing strategies do you suggest to avoid being lost in the noise of emails and marketing campaigns? Okay, so read that one more time for me, Desi. Okay, so once you have found your prime client marketing base, how do you, what strategies do you recommend so that we're just not lost in a sea of emails or the marketing campaigns that are out there? Right. How do we, how do we stand out with our how do you, it, uh, How do you stand out with your prime, with a, your prime customer? It sounds like the question. Yes. Is that the question? So you already have a customer and you want to make sure you're standing out to that customer. Well, again, it's about laser focusing on where, where your customers' eyeballs are going to be. Are your customers going to commercial UAV Expo? If they are, be there. Set meetings with them, you know, that kind of thing. Um, are they in link on the on LinkedIn channels? If they're on LinkedIn channels, they need to be in your feed to see your posts. If they're not in your feed, they're not going to see your posts. So you'll want to make sure you do some um, probably sponsored targeting on LinkedIn. And these are just examples. Um, trade shows and trade publications. Do the, the stakeholders that you need to be involved with, are they going to their own trade shows and publications? Are they, are, are, are they reading their own publications? Like telecom is, um, ConnectX is getting ready to come up for telecom. Are they going there? Are they reading inside towers? Um, these are all things that you have to discover and research and through conversations with them, you can find out and they don't have to be, you know, uh, an interview, so to speak, but just in conversation. But moreover, researching prior to getting the client is usually when you find these things out. Um, but that question is is really big. And so one prime client can be tackled in, in several different ways to keep the um, keep your presence in front of them. It really would depend on what problem they have and how you solve it and then how you execute helping them solve that and helping him remember that you do. I, I hope that makes sense. 
That's a lot. That answers your question. She also kind of did a follow up as far as does and how do we stay in front of the potential customers as well? Right. And, and that's that's really about a plan, about researching who they are and then planning how you're going to stay in front of them. Um, you know, you really have to understand your customer. Again, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I post on Facebook and I post on LinkedIn. Well, that's great. But as your customer in your feed and then think about the think about the the um, the math behind all of this. I don't see all of like so a lot of you were friends on Facebook and were on LinkedIn. I don't see all of your posts because of the way the algorithms are served and the way the that these companies do business. There's a game. They want you to pay for ads. So that's the end of the day. So you have to make sure you understand who your customer is, what their problem is, where they are going to see you, and then execute on a plan from there. That's awesome. Awesome. Where and it morphs. I mean, it changes daily almost with some people, if not multiple times a day. It can. Well, and a lot of people say, well, engineers aren't on LinkedIn or Facebook. Well, I beg to differ there, but it's a true statement in that they're not on there as much as maybe um, a marketing person would be or a salesperson would be. Same for public safety officials. Public safety officials are out in the field. How do I get in front of the main influencer at XYZ security company um, when they're, you know, out in the field more than they are at their desk. Um, these are definitely challenges, but they can be solved. You just have to understand who they are, what they look at, and when they look at it. There, it's, it's really, and there's so many things going on. It's like, um, it's crazy, Jeremiah. I know you can speak to this too, and there's probably several other people on this call who can speak to this. I can't see all of you, but it's it's definitely not as easy as it used to be, but it's doable. Yeah. Uh, also, um, Tony, or actually, no, uh, Sheila had posted in there, is anybody using Facebook ads? And so if anybody's using them, we'd love to hear from you. Put that into the chat. Jim Bonnerdale, he scored a big job through Facebook ads. And so awesome. I haven't tried it yet. I keep getting the notifications like, hey, like you said, Amy, you got to pay to play mm -hmm. and you've got to. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh, Facebook. Yeah. Well, it's hard. And so they don't make these platforms easy either. And so another thing I would say is anybody who's getting ready to look at hiring a marketing team, make sure you understand that not one marketer can handle all of the positions in marketing because they're really niched out now. I mean, you know, there's graphic designers and these social media platforms. If you're more of a technically savvy entrepreneur, you can figure it out, but um, it's not for the weary. In fact, I, Jim, I would love for you to talk a little bit about how you found success on Facebook, um, how that came about and, and share that with the, with this group. Well, sure. Um, you know, what I was going to, my first uh, recommendation, Sheila, is if you're going to do that, consider se what season you're in and the seasons of your clients. Um, don't be, don't be, uh, my advice is don't advertise in their off seasons, right? So you, you talk about, you know, if you're doing solar, you talk about solar jobs in, in spring, right? You talk about construction jobs uh, in yeah, spring too, pretty much. You, you know, Don't advertise just before the major holidays and things like that. For I mean, at least for me, those aren't, those aren't my clients, right? Um, but for the Facebook ad, we literally, so I, Amy is a hundred percent right. And I'll tell you at high tech, we have more marketing people than, than salespeople. You know, uh, our marketing department consists of four people one of them oh, excuse me five one of them his exclusive job is small social media content blasts and that tracking and that's an entire position uh we have two people that help create the content uh we've got our two graphic designers and then a marketing director it's it, 
it's amazing how many people um and because each one of these things um I, I think it was said well about lost in the noise and yes now we do have noise and maybe five ten years ago it wasn't as noisy and your stuff didn't get lost and it was a bit easier but uh so so back to the facebook ad we placed some targeted facebook ads and it's actually how we ended up doing that solar field in nevada um so so there are this but but what i've had more success with are uh direct ads in specific trade publications mm -hmm. uh you know trade publications are awesome you want to learn about a trade boy you start getting some trade publications and it figure you figure it out pretty quick yeah. um so but the the uh facebook ad worked out we let that ad roll and i think we ran the ad for another couple of months after that and then there was nothing so yeah. what you know it, it, it maybe that ad just happened to get in front of the one person that thought that was good but personally i look at facebook anymore and i can't get away from the ads fast enough mm -hmm. so i don't know if facebook's really a great place i mean for a for a business place you know of course we have a facebook page the uh, facebook page and we post regularly the daily dronies things like that and we got a large following base but those are friends of high tech those are friends of me and my job and high tech and and like like everybody here on the panel associates those necessarily aren't my clients right yeah. the client i mean although once i've had some clients it's i i see their marketing come up and their Facebook page and we cross tag and things like that. But that's really only a couple of clients when, you know, mm -hmm. a good large portion, 80, 75% of my work is maybe one or two off. It's yeah. one or two projects. And then the clients on to the next episode, right? Where some of them, I repeat clients. Yeah, they're there. And they, we share the Facebook page and things and those posts, but I don't know if Facebook really is where my client is looking. I think I, 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 think I agree. Great That's publication. I'm like trying to let yeah. go of Facebook this year. I'm I'm annoyed with it. It is. Yeah. I, I I I wish I was more uh, up with the other platforms. Right. I don't TikTok. Mm -hmm. I don't the other platforms. Um, it's not my style. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but you know, I, I but so I think I think that for me, I mean, with working with Amy, I think would be something that I would benefit from because in my company, my large company with a large marketing divisions, they're not necessarily, you know, high tech is three divisions and I'm just one of the three divisions and industrial sales is seven, $8 million a year. Well, I'm not $8 million a year. So I don't, I don't, I don't get the attention of marketing like industrial right. does, right? So right. I kind of got to do it myself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very true. Very good. Well, and Jim, to your, to your point, you, you suffer from what a lot of people do. If I don't like that platform, I don't even want to go there. Well, that is a prohibitor for you if that's where your customer is exactly. and that's you know that's kind of where somebody likes me like me comes in um who's used to it all and i you know what i tell people every day when i retire you will not see me on social media <laughs> oh my gosh you know it's a lot uh, you'll see me a little bit i wink wink smile but um in in all fairness i totally feel you and um, it is hard. It's hard to exercise something new as well, you know, after being on something else that's way different. Um, but um, if you keep it simple and you go where your customers are, it's going to help you accelerate to that revenue faster. And, you know, this next slide really just stacks up very simplistically again, how to get you from the beginning to success. And a lot of times startups fail especially in our new industry, because they didn't have a plan. They didn't do market research. Um, and, and they didn't have the opportunity to be flexible or pivot. Um, money helps us a lot with that. But um, there's other reasons that we didn't remain flexible or pivot either. And that's one of the, the recommendations I would have. Remain flexible, pivot, try new things. Marketing is about testing. So if something doesn't work, fail fast and move on. Um, 
not mm -hmm. having marketing is probably the worst idea, but a lot of people don't know how to approach it or they think they do, they do it wrong, they get frustrated, they quit. Um, and that's really understandable. It's, it's- I'm um, scared of getting hacked, Amy. Right. Well, there's I mean, that. Definitely there's that. Absolutely. That's a valid concern um, that you can approach safely, cautiously with security and privacy um, and still win. Definitely answers to that. But um, this simply breaks down, okay, what are the focus areas in each of these four categories? You have to have a product market fit. You want to acquire customers. Um, your RevGen team, even if that's just you, you know, you definitely need to have a process there. Even if it's a small little process just for you, okay, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. And then you need to have some operational efficiencies. I'm going to be real honest, gang. I'm used to having a team. And so now I've, I'm going out a little bit on my own here and um, I'm setting up a HubSpot and I'm setting up my LinkedIn pages and I'm doing all these things. And I'm like, okay. I can do that tomorrow. Well, tomorrow turns into two weeks. And then I've got a stack of things that I have to do tomorrow, <laughs> you know? And so kind of keeping up with it as you go is another great way to help yourself move faster as much as none of us, including me, want to hear that. But when you're a small team, you kind of have to, or maybe contract somebody, maybe contract an assistant, or dare I say it, Check out AI. There's a lot of tools with AI that can help us move faster now that um, you can use with integrity. That's a whole nother seminar. But um, all of these things I've given you a little bit of like, here's a focus area with these four segments of RevGen success. And then here's how to approach the execution on those. Um, and I'm happy to, to, to go into them in detail um, a little bit further if you have specific questions. But would really love to hear from you too about what is working for you, what's not working, and if I can help answer any questions before our time's up today. We do have someone that had asked if you could maybe dive a little bit deeper into the hurry to fail strategy. Right. Okay. So simply put, you execute on a project and it doesn't work. Push it aside and start with a new plan. It's as simple as that. Don't dwell on it. Come back to it. Review like, okay, what mistakes did I make so that I don't make them again in this next project? But don't sit and wallow in it because failure can really mess us up. I mean, um, look, I think failure is the best teaching lesson and that's such a cliche. I think we've all talked about that and so many different formats here together even. Um, so failing fast just means push it aside, move on, but learn from your failures. Um, and don't don't stay stuck there um, because that really does prohibit you from moving fast. You know, sometimes too, you can learn a lesson that is profound in your business strategy with just a small little failure. Yes. That's that's what's happened in, in my case. I've I learned something that was just mind expanding when it was when, when the, the actual value of something we were talking about to the client was obviously very important. To us on the analytical side, it was a 15 cent part. Right. Yep. And oh my God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, another another thing that I just read this book called Who Not How, and I highly recommend it. Um, there's a link to it on my website. Um, highly recommend it. That's why there's a link to it on my website. But a lot of us entrepreneurs who are doing things by ourselves forget that we're not by ourselves. There are people who will help us. We have associates. We have colleagues. We have a network of people. So if if you don't have the answer for someone or you don't have the answer yourself on something, I'm sure there's someone in your network who can help you succeed. And I really would encourage you to utilize uh, people to for feedback um, and to talk things through, especially as solo entrepreneurs or those of you that have great teams, you know, be, being able to talk and do whiteboarding together. It's so super important. And that helps you fail fast too. Um, you, This is what I did. It didn't work. Help me figure out how to do it right. Um, don't forget to lean into your your networks. It's what makes the world go round. 
really um, being there for each other and supporting each other, especially in our industry. I know a lot of you are big uh, fans of that. Uh, looks like Eric had said, made a comment in our chat about Jim's advice is very good. I know a fellow patent attorney who has a chemical background and she built her entire business by talking at booths at chemical trade shows. She was the only patent attorney there. And so guess who answered all the questions, right? It is. It's That is yep. so key, getting out there. Yes. Yep. Great. Yep. Absolutely. Is, is Louise one of those? Oh, I can't see everybody, but Louise, is she still on the call? As in Louise Jupp? Yep. She, 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 we, I still see her name. Hi, Louise. I don't know if she's open for talking, but I'm going to brag on her a little bit. She, she, she reaches out to people to be a part of her books and she set up an amazing business model. And one of the things I admire about you is your organization, um, your organization to get people involved in helping you build your business is a secret to success. So I would highly recommend taking a look at what she's doing and how she's doing it because it's, it's amazing and um, kudos to you and good luck. <laughs> Continued success. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, reflecting a little bit about some of the conversation that we've had and you've put out so much good information and, and it's a good time to just really sit there and think about our businesses and how we can really develop and do outreach and marketing for potential clients and customers. And so I think it's a good time to reflect on that. And with that, Amy, I see you put up your information. You've got some stuff to give away. You've got documents and things to help promote. I love this. So go ahead and share what you've got. So um, what I'm going to be sharing with you, I'll share the slide deck with everybody who um, emails me. Email me at amy at earhartalden.com. You'll get the slide deck. I'm going to um, send you the uh, finding your purpose. And really, it's exercises. It's two different exercises on helping you and your company find that why um, to help you get to that revenue generation faster. Um, also, I have B2C and B2B go to market timeline strategies. They're basic, but I wanted to get those to you and share that information as well as top marketing strategies. And these PDFs have links to other things. Like um, I'm a big fan of really utilizing what's out there. You know, there's a lot of resources out there and I've kind of, um, you know, toned it down to say, hey, I really, I really trust these companies and here's some really great strategy ideas that they've had that can help inspire you. So I've just put that all together and want to share that with you. So feel free to email me um, and I'll get all of those documents to you as fast as possible. Fantastic. Wow, that is some great information. And it's so nice that you have provided information that is from a trusted source because you're right. There's so much out there. It just becomes mind boggling. And then if anybody's like me, yeah. you tend to go down rabbit holes. Right? Yes. <laughs> and yeah, who's right. Going, what was yes. I even studying to begin with? Right? Right. 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 <laughs> so yep. fantastic. Yep. So I did put your uh, email information in there so anybody could reach out to you and ask for that information as well. And so we are just about out of time. Do you have any last questions for Amy? This has been fantastic. So much great information. Plus, I think she might have one more last little thing to give away. Well, right? you go ahead. You go ahead with that, Desi. Okay. You take it away. You lead the giveaway. Yep. We're going to give away um, um, uh, an hour consulting service, um, which is actually a lot more time than you think. And um, also a 30 day social media strategy for your business. And Desi's going to lead that off today. See who wins. You. Have to be present to win. Uh, yes. Yes. All right. So what we want to do is, so Amy has suggested many things. And like I said, wrapping it around your business, this is yours. This is all about you and how you can take the information that Amy has provided 
and put it in your context of what you think will work best for you for strategies. So what we're going to do, and I'm gonna ask for Sheila to help us out here is this tremendous giveaway, cause that is awesome, right? The, fir the fifth person to put in the, into our chat, list four benefits that you think will inspire by people buying into your business for you taking action. What are you going to do? Four actionable items for your personal business, right? All right. We're going to take the fifth person, not the first one, but it's all about you. What do you want to do? Give it a minute. I feel like I'll just remind everybody save the chat. Oh yeah. <laughs> At the yeah. end. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. I think Sheila already put one in. <laughs> but I can't win. So I just threw that out there. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Actionable data. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Again, when you're thinking about what Perfect. inspires action, you're thinking about the benefits of the customer what is going to benefit them to buy from you yeah yeah sam scully's got information in there come on let's see who's mm -hmm. else got some ideas of what you want to do for your business your purpose your plan position i love that sam that's great if i open the chat can everybody see it online since i'm sh sharing my screen yeah or no you we can't you can't see the chat i bet if you open it up Oh, Check it is open. Clients. Okay, so you can't see it then. <laughs> okay. So, excellent client support. Are we at five yet, Sheila? Oh, yeah? No? Three. We got two more. Come on. Excellent client support, customization, needs of passion, business, and partnership. That's a great one too, Tawny. Mm -hmm. And go to trade shows. That's right. Yeah, pay Google Ads research. That was another one that you mentioned, the research. Oh, Google Ads, there's a different one. Yeah, okay. Man. Yes. Awesome. Oh, wait, Let's how see. funny. My Google is over here talking to me now. <laughs> it heard us talking to him. Yeah, it listens to what you say. It's like yeah. Alexa. It, 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 Google's listening to me, that's for sure. Research potential clients. Call previous ones. Oh, that's great. Network. Uh -huh. And we've got another one in here from Jim. Fast delivery. Additional deliverables uh, and service experience. Uh, expertise. And pricing. Competitive pricing. All right. Do we have our fifth one now? Uh, efficiency. Client support work research. I love these. These are all fantastic. It makes you think about how are you going to be really diving into your marketing for your business. This is fantastic. Amy, you're awesome. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. So are you guys. I tell you what, just remember, this is your customer's benefit, right? What inspires them to, to act to buy from you? It's not necessarily a feature of your service or product or even a benefit of your product. It's their benefit. So what are they going to benefit from? They're going to benefit from saving time. They're going to benefit from actionable data. They're going to benefit from cost efficiency. They're going to benefit from um, things like fostering prosperity. Think about how your customer is going to benefit. And that is what your purpose is for you to go out to market and say, this is why I'm in business and meet them at their benefit. Oh. Yeah, show them how you'll solve the problem. That's right. Show yeah. them how you're going to solve their problem. That's their benefit. And then you have to keep in mind, if you, especially if you're working for executive, an executive leadership team, how they're benefiting too. So it, it can get more complicated the more people you get in the, the, the structure. But as an entrepreneur, you want to succeed as well. So how are you going to benefit? How's your customer going to benefit? But the only way to win is to make sure your customer is benefiting. Awesome. Sheila, who's the fifth person to put an answer in there for us? Well, my cat's adding in on it, but um, okay. okay. So okay. I, well, I counted Whitney as the fifth, but. Woo! Okay. Wait, what? Why do you say, but? Well, because Jim had two answers, so I don't know if we're going to count 
you know what I'm saying? Like one, two. So, yeah, no, go, go with Whitney. Go with Whitney. My okay. first answer was supposed to be all of those things together, and that means I hit enter an extra time. Sorry. So it should go to Whitney. All right. That's yeah. all right, Whitney. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Yay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what an incredible offer. Any, I cannot thank you enough. That is Absolutely. amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to help and support this community any way I can. So uh, again, feel free to reach out to me, get some of these, um, these handouts. Hopefully they'll be of value to you. That's the, that's the idea. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Yeah, I'm not gonna um, charge you to, you know, send a question to me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, um, like Sheila said, we want to wait. I have messed up my Zoom. Um, we want to save the chat. So, if you don't know how to save the chat, look on the bottom of the chat screen. You'll have those three dots, and you pull that up, and it'll say "Save Chat." And then, Whitney, can you put your email into our chat? And then I am going to make sure that we connect you and Amy together. All right? Awesome, Perfect. Amy. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Awesome. Oh so man, thank you. you. Thank you everybody for your time. I got an hour of your life. That's golden. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Great information. All right, everybody. It's 10 o'clock. Have a wonderful Tuesday and we will see you next week. I'll see you next week, Amy. Oh, literally. Oh boy. Literally. Going on. Yeah. I can't wait. Happy women. It'll and be a lot of fun. It's going to be. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. See ya. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Desi, Sheila, and Sharon, this was a great session. Thank you, Amy. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Sam. Good to see you. Yeah. Hi, Sam. Welcome I back. Call everybody. You. I gotta call you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. All right. Bye. Uh, mm -hmm. do I see Amy? Do I see? Hey Louise, give us a give me a collar. I don't see Whitney's email in here yet. I'll try to connect to you, okay? Okay. All right. And then uh, I'll, I'll reach out and make a connection for you, okay? Sounds good, ladies. All right. And gentlemen, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Amy. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you, Amy, Bye. for everything. Hey, that kind of wraps it up.